So here's some of the tools we're gonna use. Um, if you're a purist and a much better than me, you could get away with just some regular blocks and an angle finder. Um, we built these. Uh, they're ugly, we do have some nicer looking ones now, but post clamp these on your lower frame rail and you have all this flat spot to roll your axle around. Um, digital angle finder, sharpie and a tape measure, should be good to go. So I got everything set up in the car. Uh, we built these setup stands. They clamp on and they're flat on top, so they give you a lot of room to move around and they're clamped on so they won't fall over and knock the rear end out right after you get it where you want it. I got some pieces, just some scrap angle we had, a clamp on, uh, that makes checking that measurement much easier. Also these on the motor plate, these are definitely overkill, but it's January and there's six inches of snow on the ground, so why not? Okay, to get started here, we got our piece of angle clamped on the motor plate, so we have a good, nice line to measure to. We have the rear end in and up on our setup blocks. Using a raised rail car, I always like to add an inch here, keep the car level. You don't have to fight the rear end from falling out the left hand side. Um, have everything apart, it's a good time. And I seize your Himes ends, grease your bird cages. I also put a co coat of heavy grease in between the bird cage and the axle, between your splines, some spray graphite. You should be ready to go. Three inch PVC. It's a perfect setup spacer. A lot of guys are selling these made out of black PVC. Um, any plumber you find, I'm sure, will give you a foot and a half spare you need for free. So, that is if you want, but I don't. I go ahead and hook up the radius rods because you can move the axle around and they're not going to cause any binding or keep you at a square where you need to be. So the only time I worry about the rear end being centered side to side is when I very first start. So if your tank's off, you can see the center of your frame, line it up with the center of your chassis. And then from the side of your snout, you get a tape measure on it and get it where you need to be. So just bump it side to side. This is only for a starting point, so if there's any bends or damage to your chassis, it's not gonna end up centered. We wanna get it square to the motor plate. So next we'll actually start measuring, getting the rear end front to back where it needs to be. Um, start with the right side, get it set first. Measure from the front of the axle, rear angle. Need to move it and you know, roll it on the flat stands. Um, if you have one side hooked up, you can just start pumping it with a rubber hammer, move around a little bit. We're pretty close here for measurement. So once you get your measurement front to back, you will set the bird cage. So you want to square or set your angle finder frame rail. And we'll go to here. Adjust your radius right to find your zero. Now a lot of people like to add some angle and forward for a little bird cage timing. Um, I've played with it. I've never really felt any differences in the car. So that's a whole other conversation and video. This thing this will get you within a hundred, so. So there we go, straight up right there. And at this point, you bring your torsion arm up and pull your screw, and you don't want to put any resistance on anything, you just want it to slide right through. Get in a look and see which way it needs to go for the hole to hit. Step out some more. Then you'll have 
have it just feed right through <clears throat> let it settle if you're only seven hundredths off it's definitely close enough and there's your first side now a lot of people try to get both sides centered and correct before they hook anything up but doing it this way we'll add another step i'll show you in a second it just makes it a lot easier and less to fight. So on this side, we're gonna repeat the same steps. Now, since we already hooked that up, which might be bad mojo for some people, if we measure this after hooking that up, it's really close, then we won't have another step. <clears throat> we'll just do a little bit of adjusting here to get our number. If it's way off, then we're gonna have to go back and adjust the other side after we hook this up, but we'll see how we go. <clears throat> so, Got this hooked up and repeat the same steps. Zero out our digital angle finder. This set to zero. It's close enough. Now we'll go around and check all our measurements. <clears throat> so if we did have to move the left side a lot, <clears throat> we'll change the right side some because you're going with three pivot points. <clears throat> so we re repeat the process. You unhook torsion and bolt bump it back into your measurement, re-square, and reset. If you're doing this in a hurry, you need to just get it where it needs to be. Just start, if it's too, too long, extend out your lower Heinz joint. First, hook it up, then square it, and that way you're gonna pull it to where it needs to be. And then repeat on both sides. Doing that though, large chance of getting in the bind, so always keep checking your torque ball that it's rotating freely. Um, if you're doing this after a crash and you're fighting it and can't get your numbers right, what I like to do is unhook the torque ball and slide it back. And you can actually slide it up and you see which side it's off of. Um, it's an extreme. If your measurements are close and your ball's off extremely, probably have a bent torque to or damage snap on the rear end. Okay, so we've got everything squared, hooked up. Now we'll work on our Jacob slider. Um, come closer. So you can slide this up and you'll see, since you can see uh, part of your Heinz joint on the left side, you need to move in. Repeat this process so that hole looks lined up and the pin slides through without any resistance. Once again, keep your torque ball free, no tension in your Jacob ladder, and you're good to go. Now, all that's left is to jam your lock nuts. Um, one little thing I like to do is put a mark on top. That Sometimes when you're trying to tighten these, the first side you do will start turning the rod. This way you know you're not turning and losing any of your adjustments. Also, if you do want to play with bird cage timing, you can easily count your turns and set it back. You might have to do a full check of your rear end again. All right, we've got our front axle in and our setup block heights. Everything hooked up. It's a lot easier than the rear end. We'll run through it real quick. So, before you assemble your axle, or at some point, you want to mark and find the center of your axle. Um, I'll get a center punch, just put a little ding there, that way you always know where it's at. Um, <clears throat> usually, a starting point, I think most chassis manufacturers recommend, is an inch offset to the left. So, you need a straight edge. About right there. You measure 
to your mark. I added a sharpie mark here just to make it easier. And measure both sides, deduct with one inch, and you make that adjustment with your paint on bar so to get where you want. If you want something different, it's up to your, to your liking. That's how you set that part. Again, we start on the right side. You measure from your motor plate to the rear of the axle. We'll set that just adjust with these links. Um, once again, I also I'll put a Sharpie mark on these so I can turn them evenly. Um, if you set the angle here first, you definitely want your marks you can adjust it evenly. Or if you set your distance here first, you can turn them evenly one each way until you get All right, now we're going to set the caster. Once again, zero your angle finder off the frame. Set it on one of your steering arms. Nice flat spot. Um, I think recommendation by most people would be start around 10 degrees. Um, what this adjustment does is keeps the car from being too darty, which kind of slows down, makes it steer a little harder. If your car is being darty and difficult to drive, this would be one of the first things I'd check. Um, if you get them too upright, it's gonna be real darty and real easy to spin. Um, said we're rolling them back. This technically makes them steer harder, but just adds a lot of stability in the way they steer, just with the way the geometry of the kingpin is it sits. But now that we have the right side set, in the front, we have our caster where we want it. Um, take a measurement from the front edge of your rear axle to the rear edge of your front axle, and that will set the left side. Take the same measurement from rear end to this front axle, and we'll adjust this radius rod. Um, I think the most standard would be about a quarter inch of lead, so you'd shorten this back. Um, I'd adjust that small track to big track however you like the car to feel. And that's it. Check all your jam nuts, uh, put your car on your setup blocks, put your stops on and you're ready to put it on the ground.